It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Tetzaveh, Two Torahs. Rabbi Yaakov Meidan, one of my great teachers at Yeshivat Haritzion, pointed out that uh, there are two sources of learning Torah, learning the Word of God and the intent of God uh, in the Beit HaMikdash and in our tradition. One, of course, is from the Aron HaKodesh. One, of course, is from the Word of Torah. One, of course, is from the Ten Commandments. One is, as it says, the end of Parshat So When Moshe comes to speak with God, he hears the voice speaking to him. He between two cherubs that are on top of the Holy Ark, and he spoke to him. The main source of Torah comes from the Ten Commandments, comes from Moses, comes from the Torah, comes from the Word of God directly to Moshe. However, in our parasha, parasha Tetzaveh, it also speaks about the Urim between the breastplate of the high priest, in which uh, the Hoshin and Mishpat, in which there is the Urim between inside, there is the name of God, perhaps according to the Ramban. Something makes the prophecy come through that, and it's Vashal Lov Mishpat Urim. It says in Parsha Pinchas, if you have a question, you go to the Lazar, you go to the Kohen, God, all the high priest, and you ask him, but Mishpat Urim, the the laws of the Urim, what the Urim has to say. For instance, David wanted to go to war. Yes, should I? Should he go off? Should he not go off? Will God hand him over or will he not? Um, if, uh, if if Eli, the high priest, wanted to know if, if Hannah was a righteous woman or not, the, the, the breastplate told him, Kishira, she was a, a righteous person. And with his wisdom, he's supposed to understand the with his pro, a sense of prophecy, you should understand it doesn't say Shikara that she's a drunk woman, it says Kishira that she's a righteous woman. So, how do you uh, how do you answer questions either from God through Moshe or through Aaron? Says Rabbi Rabbi Yaakov Midan, it's interesting that when you ask the high priest. How do you get the answer? Well, they could have just had the alphabet on the on the breastplate, right? Uh, alphabet Gimel. Instead, they have the names of the tribes. And they write a few other things, uh, Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, and the Shivtei Yitzchak. And with those words, you have all the letters you need, and then those letters light up. So what's lighting up? The 12 stones and the names of the tribes, the names of Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Why? Because we get the Torah not only from God through Moshe, but also through the tribes. And interesting. In other words, the Torah has to come not just from heaven, but it has to go through the funnel of the Jewish people. You have to wonder, you know, oh, well, usually this chicken would not be kosher. But, you know, for this widow, given how poor she is, and since some rabbis say it's okay, then maybe for this woman, the chicken is kosher. The uh, When you have a national crisis, maybe things would be a little different. So uh, it turns out that, as Rev. Lichtenstein said, we have the Torah Chesed and the Torah Semes. The Torah Semes, the Moshe Rabbeinu, you want to know what is the law in a certain circumstance, you turn to the Torah and the Torah says, and then the Torah Chesed. It's what you do in a particular situation. So you'll say, Rabbi, that's ridiculous. It's one Torah, that's it. It's the same for all, for everyone. One law for the convert and the stranger. Well, what about the Gemara in Bab Metziah, Pei Gimel? What does it say? That there was a rabbi who hired some people to take some donkeys and put some barrels of wine on them and bring the barrels to their destination. What did they do? They dropped the barrels. What happened? The wine spilled all over the place. Did, they, did he benefit at all from this hiring of these people? No, he lost money. So what did he do? He said, I'm taking away your, we didn't really have anything, so he took away their shirts or their overcoats, whatever it was. So they're standing there, they've got no shirt, they've got no coat, because he's waiting for them to pay back for all the loss they caused them. So they go to the rabbi, not this rabbi, they go to a different rabbi, and they say, this rabbi, is, uh, he, he's treating us terribly, look at this, we have no shirts. It's true, we dropped the barrels, but what are we supposed to do? The rabbi goes to the other rabbi, and he says, give him back the shirts. So the rabbi said, <laughs> You know, I'm also a rabbi. Is that the law? So he said, yes. Because you should always go in the way of the good people. But then the people came, the, the workers came back to the, the, first, the second rabbi and they said, 
Rabbi, we have nothing to eat. We were supposed to get paid that day, and then we would eat supper, and we'd bring home food for our, our family. Instead, he, he not only he took away our shirts, now we got our shirts back, but we have no money, we have no supper. So he says, Rabbi, you have to pay them for their work. Pay them for their work. Dina Hachi, is that the din? Is that the law? Is that the halacha? And the rabbi said, yes. Because you have to walk in the ways of the righteous. Because you have to do the, what's right and good in the eyes of God. As the Ramban describes, there's a verse in Deuteronomy that describes that, that beyond the letter of the law, we should always do the right thing. For instance, you have, you have, a, you have a neighbor and he wants to buy your house. But instead, you sell it to somebody who doesn't even live in that area. How could you do that? Sell it to him. Uh, for instance, uh, you have uh, some orphans who sold their family home. And 20 years later, they finally get enough money together and they want to buy it back. They come and they say, hey, can we have your, our house back? Said, After 20 years? And they say, yes. Uh, we were dispossessed. We need this uh, this home back. So I see that, Yasha, I told, do the right thing. Is that the law? Is that the way it should be? Uh, no, if you look in the strict law, no. But the Torah itself has the mechanism for doing the right thing, even if it's not the strict letter of the law. So we have the Moses law, the Din, and then we have the Aaron laws. Aaron said, you know, let's make a pshara, we'll make a compromise. Depends on the different circumstances. He has to look at the law through the prism of the 12 tribes, or the particular situation of each person. Now, we're not saying something radical here. We're not trying to say that Torah is so harsh and needs to be overridden by other principles. Is that within the Torah, one of the laws of the Torah, you should be righteous. You should be, you should do it the right way. It's, it's a religious system. It's not just a legal system. The our own adds the religious component to the civil system dictated to Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe Rabbeinu himself told us that that Sita Yashar you should do this right in the eyes of God. There's a there's a justice you have to consider beyond the letter of the law. So we have we have then uh, two two Torahs, uh, two Torahs, the Torah of letter of the law and the Torah that we need to see through the prism of the individual for whom we're speaking. Who asked this question? What sort of law do I need to tell him? Because he or she needs as particular needs. They're a person. They have a name on the breastplate. And through that, that's how you come to the answer. When Hannah walked into the Holy Temple in, in uh, Shiloh, and she seemed to be drunk. The law was, get this drunk woman out of this sanctuary. It's, just, it's despicable. How could a drunk person be in the temple? But, the, if, but if you look at the names of the Jewish people, if you look at her heart, if you look at, at the person, look them in the eye and see what's going on, you discover that she's Shira. She's a holy and righteous person. You see that there's a broken heart, that she came to pour out her heart to God, that she needs a son. You give her the bracha that Eli, in fact, did. Yitana Shema Chela Techbe God, give your request that you're asking from God. As we approach life and law, we need to always remember that there are laws and there are things that guide our life. The Torah is incredible, and every law in it is righteous. All the laws of the Torah are amazing and righteous, but Yachtav, together, together with the principle that's within the Torah that you should go beyond the law itself, that you should sometimes compromise, that you should uh, that you should do lifnimi shu'ad adin, you should go beyond the law, that you should do what's good and the, the right in the eyes of God. You do what's good, in the eyes of God and people, then and only then, we will have the two Torahs working in unison, and we will truly come to the, the, the right and just, the yashar, that which is just, that which is right, that which is true, that which is Torah, and that, that tov, and also we'll be good about it. We'll see it through the prism of the human experience, and we'll, the result will be both true and good. Thank you very much for joining us here at the Baron Hirsch Congregation for this discussion. Join us each week for the discussion of the Parsha on the holidays. Thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer, and thanks to our sponsors, Barney and Karen Appis. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein.